Good morning, guys and gals. It's the 6th of December. It's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. And we are gonna gonna go for a little a little short drive, see a couple of sites today. As we pull out of the wigwam. I didn't do anything yesterday but go to Walmart, go to Arby's and come back. More cold medicine and some drinks and some food. So we're on our way. Well, first off, I uh, I, I am yesterday with my brother from another mother, Leif, who is said, you know, I know you're sick and you're, but we'll figure something out. So I'm gonna probably he gets off work at three, and I'm gonna probably meet him after work for a coffee or something where we can sit outside. Um, he used to own a coffee shop, restaurant, something down here. He said we may go there. So, I'm gonna wait for a little bit later in the day. It's about eight o'clock in the morning, 10 after eight. I thought I'd get to it now and not lie around all day until I run out of steam. I'm going to breakfast and I'm going to Norm's. Now you may think, well, we'll be shit about Norm's, but I'm going to talk about Norm's when I get there. Now yesterday, I ate at the Rodeo restaurant here in Rialto, and it was pretty damn good. They were almost full at nine o'clock in the morning on a Monday, and I got seated right away. I could get, my food came out lightning fast, and the people were nice. Let me see where I am here. My, uh, my, my garment is so ancient, it doesn't have norms. So I'm using my uh, cell phone. So we're going to norms and I'll talk about norms when I get there. And of course, God almighty, of course, there always has to be some problem with some electronic somewhere. Somehow between Sunday and today, the chip in the Rove has failed. I don't have a backup chip with me. So I'm going to have to buy one somewhere. It's not that big of a deal, but still, um, just, you know, God almighty, me and electronics. My wife will tell you everything I buy electronically, uh, any electronics, it gets gremlins. The GoPros have gremlins. Now the Rove has gremlins. Everything has gremlins. I don't know what to tell you. But we're going to Norms and we'll talk when we get there. Just in case I didn't add, I put the rear facing GoPro that I use on the windshield of the Spider on the front here. So at least I have a front facing camera. You know, I watch way too many YouTube channels where these these go, these dash cams are, are lifesavers. And like I said on the first uh, day of the trip, you know, I wish I'd have had one when the idiot hit my mom, or hit me in my mom's car from behind, right around the corner from Shady Pines. I hate people. Oh, you idiot. See, this is why I like having a dash cam. I'll talk about norms when I, I get there. Why Why norms is, a, is why I'm going to norms. We have... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. We have finally arrived at Norms. Norms. And it was an adventure to get here. Thank you, shitty GPSs. The, um, the Garmin was so ancient it didn't have Norms. This whole uh, development. And the uh, phone one steered me every which way but loose. You know, I know how to read a map. I should know better. I should just have maps. Anyway, Norms is a Southern California coffee shop chain, six or seven of them, mainly in Orange County. I need to stand away because they play copyrighted music and I don't want to get copyright struck. Um, when Marie and I were on the road the first year, after the first year, we, uh, I got a satellite dish. We, so I could watch the Warriors, the A's, and the Sharks. Well, 
I got the RV package and it's all through DirecTV. Goddamn thieves. And I paid an extra $10 a month for the broadcast networks and they're all based out of Los Angeles. So Norms advertises on the Los Angeles channels. So, and they'd always, in their ads, they'd have, you know, food and happy people. And they'd all go, Norms! And my wife and I just thought that was the funniest damn thing. And we swore one day we'd go to Norms. And, well, sweetheart, I'm here for the both of us. So, I'm at Norms. And I'm going to walk in now. Chicken fried steak with gravy. It's already good. As I pull out of Norm's, I'm going to tell you I'm glad that I came. The food was good. I got good service. Um, I told the manager the story about watching the ads on TV and such, and she cut $4 off my bill. So, God love her. Thank you for that. And the bathrooms are clean. So, a um, little struggle to get, to get out of the parking lot. Um, I had forgotten I wanted to put a, a trip in the Garmin so I could see it easier instead of the phone. And, God damn, you think I was trying to un, un, unlock the combination of Fort Knox? And then I, I couldn't find my handheld camera. I looked right in my fanny pack three times. It's right there and I missed it. Oh, God, just one struggle after another. I'm telling you, this ADHD is just nonsense. Utter and complete nonsense. It kills me and hurts me. So anyway, we're finally done being stupid this morning. Though, you know, I'm not stupid. I just, God, the endless struggle. So we're moving on to, um, well, we're going to our next stop, and you'll see it when we get there. Also advertised on the Los Angeles channels <clears throat> is Farmer Boys right here. They are a, uh, a Los Angeles-based hamburger chain. So we saw the advertisements, and we said, boy, you know, if we ever ran into one, we'd try it out. Well... A franchisee opened one up in Lodi, and we started going there, and the food was good, and we got good service. So when we started going through the drive through when the weather warmed up, uh, when we were either at Flag City or our endless stay at the Motel 6 in Lodi for the, uh, for the RV disaster, um, we'd go through the drive through and, and they started to give Chico a pup cup full of whipped cream, little clear cup of whipped cream. Well, Chico's a, you know, poodles are bright, and Chico figured out after the first or second time that, you know, if we went in line here through the drive-thru, he was going to get himself a pup cup of whipped cream, and that dog Gerald loved whipped cream. God, where is this taking me? Um, um, so, Marie's uh, picking us up dinner one day with, with Chico. And she gets to the line and she asks for his pup cup and they tell him they don't do it anymore. And when Chico realized he wasn't getting a pup cup, he jumped in the back seat, put his head down and, and acted like he had, was in trouble and was being scolded. He had the saddest look on his face and that so upset my wife it brought her to tears. They made my dog and my wife cry, motherfuckers. I hate you, farmer boys. And then, <clears throat> and then when she got home and she told me, I got teary-eyed. And we promised right then we would never go to farmer boys again ever until hell freezes over and the meteor comes. So farmer boys, all of you can just fuck yourselves because you're too much of a goddamn pinch ass to for a, a 10 cent cup, a goddamn whipped cream in a cup. Fuck you guys, I hate you.
Anyway, we're moving on to, to the next stop. Our next stop of the day finds us at the historic Route 66 Cucamonga service station that is now a museum. It's closed today. It was built in 1915. The station closed in 1972. There's a couple of markers here. It has since been restored. Um, the Historical Preservation Association of Rancho Cucamonga uh, asked the city council here in Rancho to declare it a historic landmark in 2009. This was on the National Old Trails Highway and on Route 66 when the Mother Road was numbered in 1926. As I pan around here, I'm going to link to both, uh, either or or both, uh, Steve and, uh, from Sidetrack Adventures and Vin from Adventure Vin, who have both been here. This is a pretty uh, well-known spot for, for Mother Road fans to come to. There's really, if they're closed, there's no parking. So I had to park down the block. Um, I'm gonna pip in here a couple of pictures from back in the day of when the station was active and there was hardly anything else out here. So this is why we're here. You know, I was looking at the Garmin and it said destination time 1044. And then I got to thinking, well, hell, it's probably 1044 back at the wigwam. So I'm not having my best day. I tend to overthink things. So. We're moving on. Our next stop is uh, uh, the Route 66 PE Trailhead. And I'll talk about that then. Our next stop of the day, actually our last one, because I'm going to cut this short, having a bit of a struggle. I'm going to go back and lie down. I'm at Pacific Electric Park and or the Route 66 Trailhead. Um, these uh, are uh, original uh, Pacific Electric tracks. The Pacific Electric was the largest interurban electrified passenger rail system, I think at least in the country, if not the world, but at least the country. Um, I want to point out Thank you, taxpayers of Rancho Cucamonga, California, for providing us a very, very clean bathroom of which others who had made vlogs here, and I'm gonna to link to, again, Stephen Vin, um, who also, uh, Vin actually, I, uh, is a guy that I watched and wanted to come here. So thank you, Rancho Cucamonga taxpayers, for the clean bathrooms. The PE was uh, torn down. Here's some of the uh, stations, neighborhoods and stations that are, that are no longer there.
Yeah, it's the lar world's largest interurban and street railway system from Santa Monica to Newport Beach and east in the Redlands and Riverside. Um, this part was built in about 1915 and helps for development out here, which happened in a lot of places on the PE Railroad. Um, you could get from 6th and Main in downtown Los Angeles to San Bernardino in two hours. <laughs> Certainly can't do that in rush hour today. Uh, by the end of World War II, as people gravitated to cars and buses and they, they couldn't keep up. The, uh, by 1953, the PE had closed at, as of 2010, only two miles of the San Bernardino line was being used for freight. There, is, there are cars at a PE museum somewhere down here. Um, these uh, grapes right here are mission grapes representing the missions that were out here and the Spanish invading the tribal lands. This is part of the original paved Route 66. Well, National Old Trails Road and actually the Old Spanish Trail. It goes back that far. You see it was a concrete that used uh, Portland cement. I talked about Portland cement, a particular brand of binding agent in concrete, remembering that cement is not concrete. Cement is a part of concrete. And then you see the, uh, the McAdam, which is the uh, crushed rocks, because the concrete wasn't holding up well to the truck traffic. And then you see they tried to asphalt it. That nah, wasn't holding up well either. Modern asphalt is certainly better than the asphalt used at the time. In 1941, the road was moved, Foothill Road was moved to where you see it now and expanded. Then the freeways came, Interstate 10 and Interstate 210 and there you go, uh, Foothill, Foothill Road is, at least in this part, part of California 66. It seems to me that the PE was actually along here, along the, the uh, fence line. And this is where the trail is. So, I think we're done for the day. We're gonna head back. I don't feel good, I wanna lie down. So we'll see what's next. The PE trail overpass here is where the PE used to be. You see the cool cars and stuff. I slowed the film down and then turned around and filmed the other side. I was just too tired to walk down here and film it by hand. So now you're going to see me pull into the wigwam. It was another good day. I did cut it short. I did not meet my brother Leif on this day, but I met him on my birthday the day after I filmed this. And I'll talk about that when I make my birthday film of the 7th. Thank you for watching another travel vlog on Life with Yosef. This is your host, Joe. Enjoy your day. Peace be with you. And we'll see you for the next one.